G'day guys, Mac with the uh, Sergal. So, the other day we had to talk about Games Workshop and scummy pricing practices. Why? Because people requested it. However, I wanted to do something positive to follow that up because well, it was a disgusting topic and something we've covered a lot. Uh, so today's episode was suggested by a follower as well. And they wanted to know about different conversions for 30k, different characters that people had come up with. And I thought, you know what, that is a fantastic subject. So, sorry, I don't remember who it was that suggested it, but uh, feel free to comment below that it was your idea, because full credit to you, it was a great idea. So, I've sort of covered it in the past between about some of my favourite 40k uh, miniatures that I think work really well with 30k. And of course, in the Getting Started in Horus Heresy series, I pointed out a whole bunch of different characters you could use. Well, I went out to the 30k community and I said, show me your characters. Show me what you've created. And quick disclaimer, I've tried to pick from that huge selection, and there was a lot of replies talking like 200 something different people. A choice selection of ones which are, if possible, really clear and easy to see so I can demonstrate the point um, and very rarely did I pick the same person twice if I did it was because they did two completely different models usually different legions if they have like five great examples of world eaters that's fine I'm only going to pick one of those models but if they pick something like an imperial fist and an iron hand that are two totally different models I may cover the same person twice now for those who are left out so it's got nothing to do with the quality of your work. It might just be something as simple as I already had enough pictures, which happened very quickly, or I didn't have a clear enough picture so that once it's blown up on screen for people who are watching this on their uh, home computers, that sort of thing, that the model doesn't just turn into pixels and look like a cutscene from a 1990s video game. Anyway, that said, let's get started. And what I'm going to do along the way is try and point out the components that I think were used in the creation of the models to give people a bit of a guide as to what went on. And wherever possible, I've also put the people who contributed the pictures names in there. So full credit to them and you can go and check out their work, their Instagrams if it's on there, that sort of thing, and fill your hobby to your heart's content. So this miniature from Ryan Powell is a Legion Centurion. This is the Praetor, or possibly the limited edition Praetor who came with the Power Fist. Now, in any case, what he's done is he's put a Sons of Horus Reaver backpack on him, from the looks of it, as well as a Sons of Horus helmet upgrade. He's also given him Sons of Horus shoulder pads, and I believe that's a Reaver chain axe, and a regular bolt gun. These very minor changes, as simple as just a head, a helmet, some shoulder pads, turns a model from a very plain generic Legion console, because that's exactly what it is, into a very Legion specific console. It is really that easy guys, and you'll see several more miniatures like this as we go along. This next one here by Wilfred Armstrong is, I believe, the Red Scorpions? They bought out that recent kit which had a banner guy and a champion of some description in it. Um, I'm pretty sure that this guy here is the banner guy out of that box set. As for the banner itself, I think that's actually the banner of the old Ultramarines on a guard. I believe that originally had a picture of a marine skewering a tyranid or something on it where it's now got the sort of uh, skeleton of Sanguinius beautifully free-handed onto it. At a guess, anyway, I think that's what it is. Uh, as for the horn-blowing ghost at the back, I couldn't tell you. Probably something from fantasy, I'm guessing. Old-school fantasy. Uh, the sword looks like one of the Bond Angel's blades from Conversion World, at a guess. And uh, the helmet is... An Ultramarine's Honor Guard helmet. Possibly something like an Invictus Suzerain's helmet. Or it could even be a Red Scorpion's helmet option for one of their command squads. Cool. That's my guesses for the parts anyway. I could be totally wrong, guys. This one from James Cope is very clearly a work in progress still. 
This is a Cacophony Noise Marine torso and head. Uh, it is one piece. He has given him different arm options, a lightning core, and I can't exactly tell from the angle what the other weapon is. But he's given him a Sons of Forest Reaver backpack, which is very spiky and chaotic, and it looks like a Reaver shoulder pad as well, or possibly even a World Eater shoulder pad. There are some spiky ones there on the uh, rampages. And a Word Bearer's left shoulder pad. Now, the Diabolist is a sort of demon possessed character, for those who are wondering, which is why this is actually a really great use of parts and something a bit creepy. Jody Leach has put the Shadow Captain Corviday body, uh, replaced the Hammerhead, looks like with the Crozius from the Chaplain that came in the Betrayal at Kelf box set, and Dark Fury backpack and wings. The helmet looks like a Mark 8 helmet, or a Mark 7, sorry, from the 40k range. And the base is actually Korax's display base, I believe. Aaron Bailey has a very converted character here. This one here is done a lot of work with green stuff and that kind of thing. But the basics there, you have the Mark III Command Squad head, or Mark III Upgrade head that's no longer in production, sadly, with the large crest. The weapon arms are designed for the heavy chainsword, but they're actually holding a, if I remember correctly, it could just be Mark IV arms, the cut and green stuff. Uh, but if you go into his board there, Sheep's Forlorn Hope, you'll see the full build for this one. Um, so he's got the Grey Knight's Power Sword there, he has a upgraded bolt gun from Forge World slung on the back, looks like a, a shield for the shoulder pad uh, from the Grey Knight Terminator's range. So this is going to sort of the extremes of creating your own character, where he looks kind of generic until you zoom right in and you realise there's a crap load of custom work done on it. Andrew McPherson here has used, I believe, the Nathaniel Garrow body with the head and shoulders and backpack of Shadow Captain Corviday. Looks like he also has a marine boarding shield in the other hand. Cool stuff. Pete Whitlam has the Gygor Fellhand model. He's replaced the fell hand of the left arm with a plastic arm and Thunder Hammer out of the, I'm going to say the Burning of Prospero because it's a Mark III arm, and he's replaced the Hammer Head with the head of, I believe, the Librarian Terminator available from Forge World. It looks like that kind of Librarian Axe Head, I believe. And he's also replaced the sort of face uh, with a different face and put a Mark IV backpack on it and a different left shoulder pad. So taking an existing Monopose character out of Trail at Kel, little Bernie Prospero, sorry, and he's done something interesting with it. Cy Davis here has, at a guess, I believe that's the Elf Legion special character, um, whose name just suddenly escapes my head. Definitely the Elf Legion special character's body um, and cloak, that sort of thing, but he's actually put an Elf Legion upgrade head or helmet onto him so he doesn't show the bare skin. And he's replaced the arms. One has a power sword normally that it's leaning on and a thunder hammer that he's also sort of using like a walking stick leaning against. He's replaced that with the Palantine Blades from the Emperor's Children two-handed swordsman's sword and arms. I definitely know that because A, the sword, and B, the uh, elbow pad is that sort of big, fancy one. Craig Bidolf here has used a Palantine blade with a right shoulder pad from the Sanguinary Guard kit, I believe. Has the Palantine blade, body, arms, replaced the blades though with un Gonna guess Swords of the Wraith Guard. Um, possibly something small though, like Howling Banshees, something like that, or even some Eldar Exarch perhaps. But I'm gonna go with the uh, Wraith Guard kit. And he's used a Contemptor from the 
Custodes Force as the base. Oh, and a Mark IV backpack. Uh, Mark IV jump pack, more precisely. Alessandro Massetti has used the Alexis Pollux body here, I believe. And it looks like Jago Sevatar's head with a special weapons backpack, possibly missile launcher backpack from uh, the heavy weapons upgrade kits, I think, because it's got that big sensor on it. Um, looks like the Crozius he has is from the Deathwing Knights from 40k. I know where that pointy hand comes from, but I can't place it. It's a plastic component, though. I believe Space Marine Devastator Squad, something like that, the Sergeant? I had a guess. Anyway, great example of another Legion's character cut down all the Imperial Fist stuff hacked off in order to make it into a word bearer. Although it's not a Legion force, Anton Maslenikov, Maslenikov, uh, do forgive me for my chronic mispronunciation of names. Uh, it is not my strong suit. He's created this awesome character conversion, and the way he's done it is by, I'd say, a death core of Krieg general or commander. And it looks like some green stuff works, like the fur around the top of the cloak. I'm guessing something like the Dark Elder Scourges, perhaps, for the helmet? I don't think that's Craft World Elder. It's definitely Dark World Elder. Uh, Dark Elder. Dark World Elder. <laughs> yeah, pretty sure that's Dark Elder uh, Scourge Head. Not sure about the horns, though, or some of the feathers. But that's enough parts to give people a start if they want to recreate that awesome character. Because that's badass. Uh, Steve Sandon has a really basic one, but again, basic is a good thing. This is a World Eaters character. Majority of it is from the Betrayal at Kelf box, and it's the Chaplain's head, body, all that's normal. He's put a small skull trophy on the left, uh, sorry, the right hand side of the model, hanging down the leg. He's replaced the left arm, which holds a plasma pistol, with a lightning core. The right arm, he's cut the head off the Crozius, it looks like, and replaced it with a back-to-back -back twin chain axe. Um, and the backpack is a Mark IV jump pack. So, again, monopose, plastic model, completely different weapons load out on it. Very, very little work to achieve it, which is not a bad thing at all. Andrew Sprague here has a Mark III Space Marine. He's extended the armor plates from the chest with plastic heart, I'm guessing. The Power Axe is a Mark IV Power Axe, I think, uh, with a full custom shaft that he's made for it to sort of extend it up. Looks like he's used a bit of plastic card and tubing to create some cables. So again, you don't have to necessarily go to Forge World Games, which are buy parts. You can sort of make your own. Um, so he's just used some bits from his bits box and mostly just done a lot of plastic card work, which again, perfectly viable approach and a Mark IV boarding shield. Jeff Shamuil, Shamuil, Shamwow. Um, this looks like it was originally the Pravian console's legs. He has, the Pravian console has this funny little tabard that hangs down over the crotch area, over the cod piece, if you will. And it looks like, I guess he's it's a very hard piece to remove. He's replaced the torso with an Imperial Fist upgrade torso. Possibly from the Templar Brethren. And it looks like a Templar, Templar, Templar Brethren uh, power sword in the right hand and right arm. He has used a upgrade piece out of the Mark IV Betrayal of Kalth set, which is the tacits hanging down off the belt buckle to cover up that cod piece area, uh, strapped a melted bomb to the side of him and given him a phalanx water shield on the right hand side I believe on this model. 
Craig Dolan here has another example of what started out as a betrayal at Kelp character. This one here was originally armed with a bolt, a combi bolter. It was a Malta bolt gun in the right hand that he's firing at a bare head. He had a big cloak hanging off the back of him and his left arm was a chain fist. Well, it looks like he's cut away all of the straps and such hanging down from the arms, got rid of the cloak completely, which is quite a bit of work on a monopose model. He has then replaced the right hand with a thunder hammer. The left hand has been turned into a bionic with a the combi melter attached there instead. Looks like up on the back, possibly a Necron gauze weapon off the Immortals, I'm going to say. Uh, combined with some parts of... I'm going to say it's a core of one of the 40k Adeptus Mechanicus boxes attached to the end of the Gauss weapon, and that's how he's created his servo harness. At a guess. And I think the other part of the servo harness uh, is from the Primaris Apothecary. That's what I'm going to pick anyway. Lydon Proctor here has the Herald in the weird mark of armor. I'm not sure what you call it because it's like it's cataphractic legs with a Mark V chest. It's a very weirdly proportioned model from Forge World. Not my favorite. Uh, possibly in my bad list. But again, looks like he's gone for a servo arm. Possibly off a mechanic of walking tank. Or possibly off that same uh, apothecary from 40k. Uh, he's given him a head of Khan the Betrayer. The grenade harness behind his heads off the Terminators. Possibly a resin one. Uh, Volkite Charger in the left hand, he has Iron Warrior Terminator Pauldrons, or Terminator Pauldrons in general, off Cataphracti Terminator for his shoulders. Pretty cool conversion. Hauk Jacobson has a highly converted model here. I believe this is Marius Brunson of the Emperor's Children. So... There is, at a guess, Palantine Blade's chest. I think that's Cacophony legs. Definitely Cacophony noise weapon in the right arm. Uh, looks like he has combined part of part of the 40k fine cast or metal. I'm guessing fine cast in order to get it to fit, because um, it would be a pain in the ass to chop it up in white metal. Part of a fine cast noise weapon or noise speakers off a noise marine's armor into the lower half of this guy's face in order to create that sort of weird distended face uh, really cool stuff uh, and at a guest flayed one hand on the left arm from the necrons and i think that's Sevatar's cloak hanging off his back at a guess and actually that might be where the legs are from no they're, they're not they're not Sevatar's legs no very cool anyway. Maybe Chrom? The Space Wolf from 40k? I don't know. The, the trim looks very Space Wolfish. The Legend Commission Painting Studio. This will be Miles' work. So, that is an Emperor's Children Power, uh, power Time Blade again with a Blood Angel's Head upgrade. Mark IV Jump Pack. One angel's left shoulder pad from the 30k upgrades, a right shoulder pad from the sanguinary guard kit, I'm going to guess. The flamberge sword he's holding looks like it could be one of two things. It's either an empire one that he's put on there, or it's possibly, possibly something from a third party like conversion world who I bring up because they do really good swords. Tom Morgan has um, another person who's taken an existing character for another legion and then cut them right down. In this case, this is Khan the Betrayer. 
he's shaved all the cables off Khan's head, shaved all the World Eaters symbols off him, and it's been replaced with a Mark V slash Mark II jump pack, because they use the same jump pack for both Marks. I guess it's a Mark II one, it was around on that armor first. Uh, Sons of Horus shoulder pad. That's really all there is to it. Pretty simple. He's just yeah, shaved off icon all the old, uh, all the old iconography, replaced it with decals, that sort of thing. Uh, it looks like he's still holding the butcher or whatever it's called. His uh, machete that Khan comes with. That's pretty much the stock Khan the betrayer. Oh, Little Legend Studio again. So as I said before, some people pop up twice if they're radically different. So a couple slides ago, Blood Angel based on a Palatine play. This time out, we have what looks like Khan the Betrayer's body again, but he's heated them up or reposed him in such a way that instead of having the running pose of the previous miniature, which is how Khan comes, the left foot's now firmly planted on the ground as if he's crouching down, as ready to raise the shield uh, and take a swing with his big mace. The mace itself is a meteor hammer from the Rampages kit. Looks like some jewellery chain wrapped around the model's arm. Khan the Betrayer's helmet. He's extended the head crest on top. From the looks of things, possibly Rampages shoulder pads as well on the arms. And a Mark III uh, boarding party shield. Or Mark III breacher shield. Very cool stuff. So again, not a crazy list of parts there. It's what you do with the parts that counts, guys. Michael John has... Okay, this is an interesting one. It looks like the Mark IV heavy chainsaw arms are holding Eidolon's hammer with an Ultramarine's upgrade helmet with a Mark V backpack. Uh, sorry, Mark VI backpack, the beaky kind with an antenna added to it, with Garviel Woken's body, or at least his legs, and looks like an Ultramarine's upgraded chest. And on his back, I know it's hard to see in the shot, that looks like the shield of a Styrian Moloch from the Minotaur's chapter. Felix Lutherinus has that Mark uh, three armored Praetor, or Consul from earlier, that one from the very first slide. He's done the same sort of thing as the guy on the first slide who had a Legion helmet, Legion shoulders, and Legion backpack. Well, same sort of thing here. He's gone for a Mark III Signaler backpack, which he's cut the aerial off and put a little scope on. That's a Death Guard upgraded head uh, from their helmet range. Uh, I can tell because he's got the very pronounced uh, bald head angry eyes big rebreather death guard mark three shoulder pad on the left hand side plasma pistol and that's replacing the normal uh architect pistol the model comes with and he's gone for the upgraded death guard scythe but again weapon swaps shoulder pad swap head swap basically is what it boils down to and you have a very unique model tom morgan here has i'm going to say that's the base of ferris manis with a baton from 30k uh who all his stuff has been shaved down like the sons of horus iconography he's been given a vigil pattern storm shield i believe that's what they call the imperial fists uh, storm shields i'm guessing that's a 40k head Possibly a 30k one, actually. Ooh, I'll have to look into that. That looks like a Terminator uh, Thunder Hammer as well, or Power Ball in the left hand. But it's otherwise, again, pretty much stock abandoned, just with the Sons of Horus iconography shaved off. And it looks like these shoulder pads have been replaced with some different cataphractic shoulder pads instead of the very Sons of Horus ones it would have come with. Philip Rosberg has... A very plain model, but again, plain isn't a bad thing. This is a 40k Mark V torso, 
probably from either the Chaos Space Marine range or more probably the old Oilists, say jump packs, something like that. Um, has the torso of that. Looks like he's got one of the Stern Guard or Vanguard veteran heads. He's got an Auspex, a Power Sword. The sword itself is the Mark IV blade from 30k plastics. Betrayal at Kelth. Possibly the Burning of Prospero Terminator uh, sword cut down and put onto the Marine's hand. Uh, and of course, Mark IV legs. And I'm going to say it's a 40k backpack on him. Maybe Devastator Sergeant. And he's. The big searchlight's throwing me for a six, guys. So I'm not quite sure on that one. Joshua Gunn has a lovely 30k model here. Very, very, very spiky lower legs. Spiky torso. Torso looks like it's... Uh, hmm. Let me think. I think that's a Dark Angel's head with the bat's wings glued on. Maybe Reaver's shoulder pads. 40k Night Lord's backpack of the old Night Lord's character. It's the spiky legs that I can't quite place. He's in, those are Terminator legs. I think those are Cataphracty Terminator legs from the Justerian. And I think that's Justerian torso. That's why it looks so weird on him. It's a very big torso and a very little guy. There you go. Andrew Gray has a traitor in disguise. That's an elf legionnaire in there. So what have we got? We have a Sarum pattern helmet. I'm going to go with World Eaters 30k, uh, sorry, World Eaters 40k upgrade for Corn Berserkers from Forge World with the bunny ears shaved off and a head crest put on. Right, he has the body of a Legion Herald. That one that I said earlier has these weird Terminator style legs that I don't like. The pistol looks like it's from Necromunda. Possibly Gene Stealer Colts. I can't quite place it. Uh, jewelry chain wrapped around the fist again. And yeah, pretty cool. And the Demarine on the base is from Azik Araman's 30k base. Jimmy Henriksen has a Emperor's Children Palantine Blade body with the Mark III Command Squad arms, which are drawing the blade from the sheath. That's a part. Uh, it's like four parts, actually, that come in that blister pack. With Emperor's Children shoulder pad, because they don't have decals, because fuck Emperor's Children players, hashtag Forge World. I'm going to say either Asterian Moloch or Chaplain Encomi from the Minotaur's range. One of the crests off them, uh, off the back of their armor, being placed onto his head. And it looks like some sort of iron halo in the background, possibly the old uh, top of the banner pole in the 40k kits for the uh, Legion Command Squad, or sorry, Chapter Command Squad. Jonathan Tung has a more Devian Raven Guard body with a little bit of... I'm going to guess an Elf Legion Headhunter, perhaps? Head? Um, and shoulder pads. And he's extended the rifle to make, I think it's called, actually, no, I won't name what I think it's called. I was going to say Silence, but that's the Scythe of Mortarion. Uh, but anyway, it's the weapon that Exodus has, is this crazy sniper rifle. And I'm guessing that's a Dark Eldar Venom weapon of some description. He's ex basically extended the barrel with. Cool. Simple conversions again. Shaved off the Raven Guard iconography. Elf Legion shoulder pads on, Elf Legion head on, all of a sudden, totally different Legion. Dan Collister has used the, I'm going to say 30k Imperial Fist Command Squad Herald, the one that's holding the banner out of the squad, with the head, uh, psychic hood, staff of the 40k Librarian in Power Armor, 
plastic one who's got one foot up on a rock. Robert Crutchley has used, uh, again, we have uh, Khan's body, Space Wolf's 40k plastic head, kept Khan's plasma pistol arm on the left side, replaced the right arm with something out of the Wolfen, I'm going to guess, with mm, that backpack looks like it's got Tyranid skull on it. That's got to be Chrom. Con oh, not from the Conqueror, uh, from the Space Wolf dude who has that Frost Axe from 40k. That's his backpack, at a guess. Jason Lycovera Jones has a Dark Angel. Hmm. Don't see many of those, which is, I think, why I included it in this list. Whoa, tough selection parts here. The backpack is... I want to say most of the body is actually Sigismund from 30k with a Dark Angel's helmet that he's upgraded with. Dark Angel's uh, shoulder pad as well. The weapon though, I can't see enough of it to make an educated guess as to what that is. I'm sorry. I think that's Sigismund's original backpack. Matt Tonka Thompson has gone down the 40k route. Chaplain Cassius, I believe. He's chopped off the I Ultramarine's iconography. Uh, no, sorry, not Chaplain Cassius. Uh, the one that... The Reclusiarch or whatever. The one that comes with the bundle with like a Razorback and a Command Squad or something. And it all comes together. Some 40k bundles. That Chaplain... With a few like extra um, purity seals and that kind of thing. Because he's a uh, word bearer. That simple. Uh, probably has a word bearer shoulder pad that is not in shot. But yeah, pretty much a 40k plastic model, guys. 30k. Looks great. Suits well. Kim Sorensen has the 40k Shadow Captain Corvette head in the body of the 30k Praetor Terminator with part of the servo harness of a 40k Tech Marine. Attached to the backpack of the old, uh, who is it? The they've gone out of production. The Astral Cores Velthex, I think it was the Master of the Forge. He has the conversion beamer. That's his backpack uh, with a standard Thunder Hammer, and I'd say the right hand being Terminator sized, probably a Grey Knight Paladin's left hand. At a guess. So, uh, and the shoulder pad. The shoulder pad with like the crazy lightning bolt pattern on the right, uh, sorry, the left shoulder. Possibly from one of the tributes. So, that's my best guess at parts. Looks cool though. Jack Francis Eldridge from the Anvils of Connor has supplied this, which is clearly a 40k Death Guard Space Marine with Tartarus Terminator legs and belts. I'm guessing probably Death Shroud, judging from the belt. Death Shroud legs with the 40k pop belly body with the Nurglish stuff shaved off it. The head with the big gouge taken out the side of it. I can't quite place. Possibly a World Eaters upgrade head from 40k resin range. Possibly something from 30k. Possibly one of, yeah, go through the 30k heads later, guys, and have a look. I reckon that's a 30k head upgrade from one of the sets. Uh, it's not maybe Salamanders, something like that. It's not going to be something like Iron Warriors because they're all wearing helmets. Uh, but yeah, I think that's where it comes from. Uh, looks like a Terminator Power Fist on the left hand. The sword in the right hand, I'm going to guess fantasy undead range? Just guessing. Could be something like uh, Stormcast Eternals from the size though. It looks like something a vampire or a blood dragon would use. Jack Daniel Tequila here has... That's the Chaplain Cassius leg 
with a Sons of Horus torso, Sons of Horus themed shoulder pads, Sons of Horus uh, command squad banner in the left hand banner arm, with the with the right hand off the Sons of Horus command squad as well because it has the uh, the Sons of Horus eye glyph on it, the veteran eye glyph, as well as the correct axe, and that's a Reaver backpack that comes in the same kit. The head I can't place though, but the rest of it, yeah. Michael Santos has this lovely uh, conversion. Again, really, really simple one, guys. So this is the Praetor again that's popped up a few times. The Plain Mark III guy. It's either a mounted head and a power fist or an architect pistol and a power sword that he's leaning on. Uh, this one here is just giving him a thunder hammer with a little skull pommel which is cool and i think it's a dark angel's helmet that he's upgraded him with but this is an alpha legion guy and works perfectly fine it's as simple as that just a weapon swap a head swap completely new model that suits your legion paint helps too and we're back to this model from ryan power which is where we started which is the exact same model as this one so that's what a few little bits difference is, guys. Look at the heads, the backpacks, the shoulders, and of course, the weapons. Anyway, I hope you've all found this very informative. This is just a small selection of what's out there in our lovely Heresy community. Don't feel like you have to go out and buy the most expensive kit, the most crazy Praetor. It can be as simple as the head, the shoulders, the backpack, and a weapon. That's what I love about 30k, and the way that just these minor little changes can add so much character to the models you have on the board. That's one of the things that annoys me about 40k, that because they've gone for the monopose approach with all their characters, where they've made it really hard to change things like heads and shoulders and weapons, you miss out on this. That really easy ways of making something your own by going, oh, I just changed this one little thing, you know, look how much of a difference it makes. You know, putting a helmet here or a, uh, reposing an arm there or moving a leg. Stuff that you can't do when you have like cloaks molded in or um, the torso and the legs connect with this really weird crisscross uh, pin system that Bono Pose models often have. 40k kits currently take the ability to customize away from you and these 30k models here are the exact opposite there is so much you can do with them everything you can change yeah a lot of the characters have one piece torsos with legs and chest to one piece but everything else is separate so you can go to town you can make things like the marius ferozian conversion um, go crazy guys the options are out there this is just a small taste of it you can pick any model from the 30k range that you like and find ways of converting into something unique for yourselves. Anyway, I'm Mac of the Outer Circle. Hope you all enjoyed this episode and I'll see you all next time.